Hello everyone, this is People in Power and I'm Summer El Shahat. The world's financial markets are truly feeling the pinch. A lack of money and credit, a falling housing market and banks folding. Things are so bad that some are predicting that we're heading towards financial Armageddon. Governments and central banks are trying to cushion the world's financial markets from complete meltdown. So the US Federal Reserve, the Fed and other central banks have come up with a plan to pump more cash into the global financial system to ease what's being called the credit crunch. The other banks involved are the Bank of Canada, the Bank of England, the European Central Bank, that's the ECB, and the Swiss National Bank. Part of the plan has been the reduction of interest rates, which is really good news for mortgage holders and banks on the verge of collapse. But it's bad news for savers. They won't be making as much money in interest. And this is where the conundrum exists. Some people, like financial commentator Max Kaiser, believe that governments and central banks are rewarding borrowers, and in particular bankers who have been very careless and greedy in their financial dealings. And it's punishing the wrong people. Savers, in fact, who have been very careful and prudent with their finances. So are these the morals and financial values that capitalism should be encouraging? Max Kaiser gives us his viewpoint. Around the world, financial markets have been in turmoil. Prices have plunged as investors have panicked. In America, a housing bubble built on cheap credit is bursting. And in the rest of the world, bad debts are wiping out bank after bank. In the UK, there was a major run on this bank. In January of 2008, this stretch bank was brought to its knees by one rogue trader who lost 5 billion euros on a 50 billion euro roll of the dice. Central banks are slashing interest rates, just like the bankers and brokers wanted. Uh, isn't it a little bit like the lunatics are running the asylum at this point? Well, it could be. Uh, it could be that uh, the lunatics are in the central banks. <laughs> the lunatics are in the central banks uh, because uh, they're making the assumption uh, that if they cut interest rates, then consumers will borrow more. Are the lowering rates uh, by the banks, is that in response to economic factors, or is it more in response to a need to essentially bail out the banks? Well, there's a key moral hazard problem at work here, isn't there? I mean, I think it would be hard-pressed not to concede that the reason they dropped interest rates was in a panic response to trying to sustain, what, the stock markets, and whose best interest is that in the longer term? Boom, boom, boom! This is a story about a war. A war between savers versus speculators. Looking back over the past couple of years, which was the riskier bet, to be a saver or a speculator? Well, just look at what's happened to real interest rates. It's, mm -hmm. If I were to go back seven years ago and ask the question, be a speculator, go out there, punt money, go into derivatives, do all of these things, when the proverbial hits the fan, uh, well, it looks like you'll get bailed out. Bailed out indeed. Whether it was individuals who took out mortgages they could never hope to pay off, or a group of bankers that risked and lost the bank's entire capital on the roll of the dice, central banks have come to their rescue by slashing interest rates. So why do they cut rates? Well, let's go to the Bank of England website for an explanation. A reduction in interest rates makes savings less attractive. Uh-oh, that doesn't sound good. And borrowing more attractive. Hmm, borrowing more attractive. What's the problem with the, the banking system in the UK and the US? They're over-leveraged. What's the problem with the consumers in the uh, US and the UK and around the world? They're over-leveraged. So you see this lowering of interest rates is actually driving debt accumulation. It stimulates spending. It says right here in the Bank of England site. They're using interest rates to increase spending. Uh, do they work for the uh, retail association? The, the broader question should be, well, what happens to the guy in the street? What signals do we send to the person out there as to what they should be doing, what their long-term economic behavior should be? And I think all the signals for, the, for this decade so far, the signals have just been wrong. The signals to me as an individual in the street is not to go out and say, the signals there to me as an owner of a business is to go and leverage my firm to, to the hill, go out, spend lots of money, do these things, take risks, because at the end of the day, if there is a systemic problem that flows back to my firm, interest rates will go down, and at least that will ease the pain, even if the economic logic behind it should dictate that interest rates should be moving the opposite direction. Uh, there are dangers in slashing rates when consumers are already overburdened with debt. Um, the problem is that if you do that, then 
and consumers may take on even more debt and then down the road there's an even bigger problem. Isn't that, uh, can we call that moral hazard? Uh... Yes, there is, there is a, a problem there of moral hazard in that uh, consumers may feel that because the central bank is uh, indicating that it is right and proper for the sake of the economy to borrow more, um, that they will have uh, a safety net if they do get into trouble because the central bank will always cut interest rates in such circumstances to bail out imprudent borrowers. It goes on to say that lower interest rates can boost the prices of assets such as shares and houses. So here you have another bad effect of lower interest rates. You're boosting those asset prices. And are people saving? No. They're using equity extraction to accumulate more debt. So low interest rates, as it's stated on the Bank of England's own site, is A, creating asset bubbles, and B, creating savings shortfalls, and C, accumulation of debt. All of those are not good. So very low interest rates encouraged consumers and businesses to borrow as they tried to buy more houses or more shares with all this borrowed money, asset prices soared. And as asset prices soar, it encouraged even more borrowing to speculate on further gains in asset prices. Yes, Western economies stopped investing capital and turned to speculating with borrowed money. But it was all built on low interest rates, so what happened when interest rates started to rise? Higher interest rates, all other things being equal, and this is a rough generalization, are bad for those kinds of positions because they're backed up by rising asset prices. And when typically when asset prices start to fall, there are problems that emerge in these books, the subprime crisis being just one example of that. Well, what happens in those circumstances? You could argue that they should just leave interest rates where they are, let people take the pain, let the banking system take the pain on their balance sheets. But what the Fed has done is just come in and really effectively bail them out by reducing interest rates very sharply. You described it as, I, I forget the adjective you used, um, I think I said that there was a meltdown, meltdown. in the housing market okay, in the United meltdown States. meltdown in the housing market. And yet, the, uh, now the first big bank failure that we've seen in the last couple of years is in the UK, in Northern Rock. How did Northern Rock end up inheriting the problems of the US? Uh, what happened with Northern Rock was that it adopted uh, a very unusual business model in which it lent money first and then raised that money in the markets, in the wholesale money markets later. And when the wholesale money markets seized up as a result of what was going on uh, with US mortgages, um, Northern Rock found that it could no longer finance itself. Uh, there was nothing wrong with Northern Rock's assets, but its way of operating was shown to be highly risky and as a result um, it had to turn to help to Bank of England and the government. Yes, every time a banker with a very unusual business model goes bust, central banks and governments throw money at them. And all this money is causing inflation. Well, let's talk about inflation for a second. In other words, I've got a pocket full of money. The government prints more money. What happens to the value of the money in my pocket? Does it go up or does it go down? The spending power of that money is less. Right, so my purchasing power yes. drops. So when I go to buy my cup of coffee, I'm going to take takes more of this in my pocket to buy that cup of coffee because the government has debased the value because it keeps printing more and more. Yes. Right? Yes. Now, what is the prudent thing to do? If they weren't lunatics, what would they be doing? I think the sane solution is to accept that uh, the economy is overextended and to tolerate some significant slowdown in expansion uh, for a number of years while excesses are worked out of the system. Mm -hmm. This is a very painful solution. It's not one that recommends itself to politicians because they're working on a shorter cycle. So there you have it. Politicians and central bankers will always be lunatics, lowering rates to keep consumers borrowing so that bankers stay rich on the fees selling them the loans. And in the real world, outside the speculators' debt and asset bubbles, well, inflation is raging. Costs of living are skyrocketing, and workers are noticing. I don't think you've got to be a mathematician to work out the cost of living, petrol, food, Everything is going up, energy costs are going up, and our wages are in effect going down. 
Exactly. So, yeah. again, the question, is it fair, then, if bankers in the city of London, because they suffered a little loss of, because of the market correction, they're being bailed out with hundreds of billions of dollars worth of Bank of England money, and you guys are not even getting a 2% raise, which is not even keeping up with inflation. This is true. Every time I...